everybody. Welcome to Pale in Comparison. In this podcast, my sister uses her knowledge of the otherverse to take a look at Pact, Wildbo's least appreciated work, and I try to not give away any spoilers. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read more. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. This episode, we are covering Bonds, Chapter 1.3. Before we get into that, however, I'd like to issue a spoiler warning. This podcast is filled with pale spoilers. If you don't know whether Cherry Pop ever figures out Snowdrop's gimmick and don't want us to tell you, stop now, read Pale, and come back to this podcast. As for Pact, there will be full spoilers through the chapter we are covering. All right. Before we start, I just want to ask Malia, how did you like this chapter? I liked it, but I think that it, um, I was, I was wrong about some (laughs) things and that sort of hurt a little bit. You know, I've been diving into this trying to like make really specific predictions and I found myself wanting to shy away from that because I didn't like the feeling of like being wrong. So I think this was a good experience and a nice thing and rereading it was less of like, oh, I was wrong and more like, ooh, that's interesting. So I really liked it. I didn't think we'd get so much so quickly, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's a lot of information, um, yeah. especially if you don't know what any of this stuff is. To be fair, and I mean, I'm not saying what you got right or wrong yet, because we're just starting, but like, you had some really good guesses, and I feel like <laughs> there wasn't, at least in terms of what I'm thinking, I don't know how the hell you would have guessed that correctly, so... <laughs> I feel like you uh, made some pretty good educated guesses with what you had, so I wouldn't feel bad about that. <laughs> I liked it. I was like, oh, that's, I never would have thought about that. Anyway, <laughs> very broad, but so I'll start off by just reading a quick chapter summary and then we'll get into it, okay? So mm-hmm. basically, an exhausted Blake finally makes his way to Hill's Glade house, which is Grandma Rose's house, due to a good Samaritan who drove him there. He and Rose end up looking through some legal documents that were left for him, and they found a hidden room. There, they found a letter from Grandma Rose and some disturbing and, well, some more disturbing than, than other books. <laughs> <laughs> so, start off with Blake arriving at the Hell's Blade house. Um, he also looks around just to see if Molly is there after all. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the, the moment when he walks in and like yells for Molly was so heartbreaking. <laughs> it was just like devastating. I was just like, no, it's okay. I know. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised that we got to the house this quickly. I guess, well, right now, Pale is still going on, as we've said, and <laughs> having to wait several days for the next chapter, especially right now, is really excruciating. And so I think I was thinking more along the lines of like, oh, Wild Post sometimes kind of drags things out and makes you wait for like answers. But I think um, if I was reading Pact and didn't know anything else, these wouldn't necessarily like these are answers, but also a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And also, if I had to wait three or four days for this chapter, it would feel a lot more like waiting a long time. And so I think that kind of skewed my expectations. I, I expected a lot more like harrowing escapes from others. Like I thought that he'd have, he wouldn't get a ride and he'd have to like make it to Jacob's Bell on foot or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was kind of a relief. I was like, oh, thanks. Like throwing a bone. <laughs> <laughs> I think he gets a little bit of a break for a second. Mm-hmm. And he, he like, re- he's re- like reflecting on the house and I was really trying to read into it. Like, it looks like the windows were floating there. Like, is that because the house is, like, invisible? Like, it hides the people within it? Like, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, Malia, we need to just move on. Um, <laughs> some, you know, like, maybe there's something there, but also I'm going to miss some stuff and that's okay. It was interesting when he was like, maybe this is a symbol of everything bad that had happened to me from the start. And I, I think that that's just him referring to him not being a girl and his parents really having Mm -hmm. wanted that um, because of this house and that's what the whole family really wants. It is interesting like how often, (laughs) just like every time Rose starts was that she says something along the line like you know, like they're both our parents just different circumstances Mm -hmm. and then like the more they talk like the more it's apparent how different they were Mm -hmm. treated, you know so that was kind of interesting Yeah, it sucks (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it does suck. <laughs> but yeah, so he's lucky he got a ride from that woman for sure. Mm-hmm. And end up getting into the house by a lock, basically, with his birthday as the code. Right. Or before we talk about that, I wanted to mention that 
I feel like he was really lucky that he got a ride from this woman because I was mm-hmm. I was thinking about on my read through thinking about how everyone in the town was really like, shitty to Molly and was like glaring at her and doing all these things. And it seems like that probably has something to do with the practice at this point um, mm-hmm. with like the karmic debt or whatever that Grandma Rose mentions in her letter. But it was I just it made me really happy to know how like good Blake and this woman who gave him this ride are. And also, oh, man, it's good that you found her out of town because I'm yeah. wondering maybe if he had been screwed over in town that no one would have helped him because of this mm, like that's possible. I want to say like mojo and and voodoo. Anyway, because of this thing. <laughs> Cuz the yeah. karma. Okay, no, for sure. Yeah, so goes in the house, um tries to call for Molly, she doesn't answer. Does get to kind of see her her efforts of I guess making the house a little bit more I don't know if I want to say homey, but <laughs> less <laughs> Uh, less grandma rosie <laughs> yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say homie i was so this part got me so excited i was like oh yeah the whole house is the domain and molly is like establishing her claim on the domain by dismantling what grandma rose had done i was like yeah i'm right and then i'm like oh not really but it's okay i was whatever we could talk I, about how right i was <laughs> yeah you weren't far off like slash i still don't understand close. how domains work post mortem yeah so I feel like it might be different depending on how it was set up or maybe where it is. Because mm. Alexander's fell apart, you know. Um, right. Like, I, mm. so. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, we can talk about it more when we get over there, I guess. Yeah. I, I also thought it was interesting that Molly, because I was like, oh, she's establishing this claim. Like, she's like ripping all of Grandma Rose's stuff down. And also she hates this and she hates her and she hates everything. But she obviously hasn't really settled or moved into the house. She's not like, this is my bedroom now. And this is like, you know, like, like maybe you don't want to sleep in grandma Rose's room, but maybe, you know, you'd take over some other space and you'd, you know, rearrange things and you'd do certain things. But it seems like Molly spent all of her time, like on that couch, um, which is really like lonely and sad and makes me more sad for Molly. I know. (sighs) But so Blake ends up doing his version of freshening up, uh, which is, (laughs) giving himself stitches (laughs) which is pretty interesting for sure yeah i was like blake is metal like it's just like he's just like he's thinking about infection and he's thinking about you know uh sterilizing the stuff and he's like yeah i've done this before but like never on myself and rose is just like uh (laughs) what (laughs) um and it was nice like she wanted to help but also um she didn't know how i just have to say as well uh, um, i mean Full disclosure, I've never done stitches because, well, I haven't been trained to do that. But <laughs> but I just feel like doing it with like a straight up, like straight needle would be really difficult. Because usually when you do stitches, like it comes in a little, at least the ones at my hospital um, that I work at, they comes in a little kit depending, like the, I guess the suture is connected to the needle already. Um, and it's oh. always like a curved needle and it's not a straight one because you kind of need it to it makes it a little bit easier to get through the tissue that way does that make sense Malia? or like not really i mean i think like the coming back out makes yeah sense. exactly because you don't yeah. want to just like stab it through you want to like go in and come back out and so yeah. like i mean I'm, I'm sure people have done that before <laughs> you know but i just feel like that would be really difficult to do um with a straight needle i was gonna say didn't dad give his friend stitches on their living room floor once before um we were born i feel like yeah, that was a story specify if he had like extra stuff <laughs> at work or if he that's you true know. yeah you're not really supposed to do that as a medical <laughs> so but he's retired so i guess it's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not yeah. Really supposed to do also that. sorry to everyone who's grossed out by needles and stuff but also like how did you read this book um yeah sorry i mean really you should be okay with this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, poor guy, uh, essentially. But yeah, I was I was impressed. So, mm-hmm. um, oh, you asked. This, I saw in your notes here. Has this accurate? How did Blake do? I've never seen someone stitch themselves up before, so I can't um, say how accurate it is. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess just in terms of like thinking about infections and thinking about whatever. I mean, I feel like those things looked pretty nasty. So I feel like that was smart of him to be thinking about it. Um, yes. I don't think, I mean, who knows if that would have been enough to really 
combat it. I mean, he's young, mm-hmm. uh, presumably healthy, good immune system, so I don't remember what he used to clean it with. It was... Oh, he just said he, he disinfected it. We don't know what he disinfected it with. Hmm. It did look like he had, there was a needle and thread in the, I guess, medical kit there. Mm-hmm. I'm still assuming it wasn't a curved needle, because... Unless you had, like, hemostats, it'd be kind of hard to hold it with your hand. Do you know what hemostats are? No. Nope. So it's basically, like, uh, this is going to be a really bad description, <laughs> but um, you know how, like, you have, like, pliers or something that can, like, oh, tighten uh-huh. hold down and hold something in place? It's almost like a medical version of that. Uh-huh. I mean, except a lot smaller, obviously, Oh, and they, like, they, like, hold your skin together when you're sewing, or... They hold the needle no, while you're the sewing. Needle. They hold the needle while you're sewing. Um, it makes it a little bit more accurate that way. Ha- okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it takes some practice to get used to, or like to, to do that, but the actual needle is pretty small. Are they like, are they called like blood pliers? Like what is that name? <laughs> They're called hemost. I mean, uh, what- isn't hemo like blood? Let me see. Wikipedia, if anyone could tell us. Okay, so uh, I guess that makes sense. So, I mean, like, so hemostats, like, they're not just used for that, right? Like, they're not just used for sewing. They're used for a lot of different things, um, including during surgery, like, to hold close blood vessels and things like that as well. So I think that's where the name comes from. But (laughs) um, they tend to use that for um, suturing um, because it helps to be a little bit more accurate. Again, I do not know how to stitch someone's wound closed. I mean, I've seen it done, but I've never done it myself. So I probably could wing it, but you don't really want someone winging it, you know, unless it's like an emergent situation. But if it's emergent, just hold pressure, get a tourniquet. Like, anyway, I'm so sorry. We're talking. I appreciate your use of the word emergent and not just like emergency. Like, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if that's standard, but I like I appreciate it. (laughs) I think it's cool. I mean, it's, it means the same thing. It just, I guess it sounds cool, right? <laughs> it feels like you're using the adjective correctly. Uh, I'll take it. See, <laughs> everyone, like, I supposedly know what I'm talking about sometimes, right? So, um, <laughs> I'm a nurse, by the way, if I didn't mention that before, um, which I don't think I did. So, that does not make me an expert on everything, but I like to think I'm knowledgeable about some things. Chad knows things. I know some stuff. So <laughs> let's get back to the podcast part. Okay, so so he goes and looks around a little bit, right? And then he mm-hmm. finds that locked room, like on the fourth floor, or like going up to the fourth floor. Mm-hmm. At first I was like, ooh, maybe that's the domain. But I was also like, that seems a little too easy. But also, you know, nothing else was locked, blah, blah, blah. But then he d- he tries the key and it doesn't work. I, I wasn't immediately like, oh, the skeleton key is obviously for the domain. I I, I was kind of like, ooh, maybe, but also no. I'm currently thinking, like, maybe Molly locked it? Because okay. unless it's just, like, another, like, find the key or something. Part of me was thinking maybe she was going to make it her domain. But in the letter, Grandma's kind of like, there's no more room in this house, lol. Like, yeah. So it seems like she would be like, oh, go to the fourth floor. It's perfect if, unless it's all a test. I don't know. Grandma's really sneaky. I I can't imagine what else is in this room. I hope it's not something boring. It's probably not. Yeah, it's just like the guest bathroom that like they put up <laughs> they're, like, they really keep don't locked. Like guests, they're, like you have to. You, you, if you have to go, you really have to. You have it. to ask us for the key. It's like those businesses <laughs> to make sure you're like spending money. Like, hello, relieve me of you know one day's worth of karmic debt somehow. And you can use the bathroom. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I mean, do you have any, and you can save this for the end if you want, but do you have any bold, like, stupid predictions about what could be in that, what could be up there? There's no way you can guess, I don't think. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think that, I don't think this, but I'm going to put a prediction down because why not? Okay. I think that there is another bound up there who works this already doesn't make sense okay no go for um it. because presumably 
Well, okay, I don't I don't know how things work when you die with the practice because I would think like, oh no, that would all immediately unravel. But maybe it's the lawyer who has helped bind this other. I'm also not, I'm I am questioning everything I know slash don't know <laughs> at this point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's some sort of other locked in there to help with like translation or some shit. Probably not translation, but you know. You think uh, other lock is locked up? In the- there's some sort of bound other <laughs> locked up on the fourth floor <laughs> who is there to translate things i mean not necessarily that part <laughs> okay but you think there's a bound other on the fourth floor essentially mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. any random guess the type of other uh i mean like grandma wrote about demons and stuff but i think that's a little too like a really really weak lame demon Who's not going to burn the house down? Okay, I like it. <laughs> okay, and just just to go on with this, why do you think Grandma Rose would lock a demon up in her house? <laughs> I was like, Wild Bo would think that would be a really great plot point to go and to be like, oh fuck, and to like deal with the thing. You know, maybe it's a test for because like she hit her domain or whatever. Um, uh huh. And so I'm kind of like, oh, maybe like the next step is, can you, whatever, maybe the, she has a specific other picked out as a good familiar or a couple of them. Hmm. Oh my okay. gosh. Maybe it's like Professor Oak. Okay. So, so <laughs> this is <laughs> the fourth floor of the house is the beginning of every Pokemon game. And you walk in and the lawyer there who's going to help you pick your familiar is like, which one of these do you want? But then Rose, your rival, swoops in and takes the whatever the fuck that you thought was interesting and you're left with the one that's not as good against it and that's <laughs> So are these three different demon others or just three different random others? So like I still, okay. So this this chapter has not convinced me that I'm wrong about the karmic law practice. I still okay. don't understand karma at all. And so maybe there's like some sort of like like a demon kind of thing and a karmic law kind of thing. Let me see what the books were called that grandma wrote. Um, I guess they could be other things. And I should have written that down in our notes. But... Yeah, they're just all is grandma Faust? It's like dark contracts, devils and details, infernal wrath. Okay, also grandma's Faust. Okay. Do you know about Faust? That Faust? <laughs> Faust? Faust. Yeah, okay, sidebar. Dr. Faustus is f- fictional person in like certain plays, like uh Chris Marlowe wrote a play and Goethe wrote a play, I think, about Faust who made a deal with the devil um ah, that's in exchange Miller. for his soul. Okay. Um so there's like a Brendan Fraser movie that was an adaptation of this story that was pretty solid from what I mm-hmm. remember as like a twelve year old. Maybe it's problematic. I don't know. Anyway, I'm on the Faust trade now with like the the devil and the contracts. It's like Ursula, Ursula. Ariel is a Faustian is a Faustian character. She makes okay. a deal with Ursula and she sells her soul. Okay. So are you saying that well, I guess let's get to some of the these predictions later. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Going off on to a, move lo- this. a lot of tangents. Um, <laughs> so I think so that sorry. there's like maybe like a demon and maybe like a karmic law other I don't actually think this, but if we're in Pokemon, maybe there's like a demon and a karmic law other. And then maybe there's like the don't fuck it. Like the one that you're going to leave there. Okay. Like a, what would be like an other that you feel like could be like a kind of wimpy one in comparison? I mean, my first thing was like a baby goblin. No offense. I love you goblins. But if it was like a baby goblin, that's okay. not very powerful. It's like another cherry pop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just to ask, cause I'm curious, like, <laughs> Is, are there like do you think there's like different types of demons like one that focuses on like I don't know like bad food or like I don't know like or do you think they're just it's just like a blanket term for like a thing um I I feel like there's definitely different types um because I'm thinking about like goblins and fairy I mean goblins don't break down into clean lines in the way that like fairy do but mm-hmm. I don't see wild bow being like making all of these creatures the same it seems like we're leaning in a direction that like 
demons or something are going to be significant and we're going to learn kind of about them just because that's what grandma rose was so focused on or whatever okay and so i i think that they're going to be maybe not like delineated specifically into i'm a this demon and i'm a this demon and but more i do think that there will be a, a wide variety amongst them okay in terms of maybe what they focus on or maybe what kind of powers they have or something okay awesome so basically um they go through all the legal documents that were left behind um and including like a lot of the stipulations and things that they have to do to in order to keep the house and keep everything so what did you think about that part I was really excited as a as a law student. Um, also very frustrated because I wanted more of the specific contractual language. Mm. So many of my notes are like, wait, Blake, I need more information. Like I need the specific wording and these things. Like, and it was great because I was like, oh, as a lawyer, I need the specific language because contract interpretation is like really important and really confusing and really bewildering. I really appreciated the line of like the notes included like are not meant to be interpreted as binding because that's very common and like titles and contracts to different sections. Usually there's a stipulation that those aren't binding because that can influence the way that a court will interpret the contract's provisions in like possibly deleterious ways, depending on hmm. who you are. Okay. Um, so that was funny. But then also I just, as a law student, the story is so fun because it's also <laughs> like she's a practitioner or maybe or her lawyer like who there are practitioners involved right so like they can't write down lies and so the language becomes doubly important right because it's not just like finicky contract interpretation it's also the practice it's also like i mean we see so often throughout pale how important wording and language is and mm -hmm. i'm just so excited um, <laughs> and so frustrated <laughs> that i don't get more <laughs> Also, right off the bat, well, not right off the bat, but pretty soon it was kind of like, ding dong, you are wrong. Irene is Blake's biological aunt and not married into the family. Molly also has a different last name and the lawyer was wrong, which kind of leads into like another thought I have okay. later. But okay. yeah, so I don't know why she hates her fucking kids. I mean, I guess they suck. I don't know. <laughs> or it skips generations. It's like how like our grandma knit... Oh, and then our mom didn't knit, but then like I knit and Jenny kind of knits occasionally, maybe yeah. sometimes. I'm not going to lie. I kind of forgot how to like start <laughs> knitting. So yeah, I kind of don't remember how to do that. <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, maybe it skips a generation. Anyway. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you probably find out later, but <laughs> yeah. So they keep kind of talking about like their differences in upbringing and stuff. Kind of how I mentioned before, like, kind of comparing your parents and stuff. And Rose is like, oh, it's same person, just different circumstance. You know, it is kind of frustrating to, to read. <laughs> yeah, this is like the first time I got really angry with Rose. Because as we know from last episode, I was very like, yeah, Rose is great. And I totally am sympathetic to everything she's going through. But yeah, and I, I'm somewhat sympathetic here. I think that her insistence that like, it's our grandma, our parents is like her trying to establish the fact that she's real and that she exists and that yeah. like her experience is valid or whatever. Sure. But also her defending the family is not great. I know that she doesn't understand like where Blake was, like why he wasn't living with his family and stuff, but like defending the grandma and the dad and all that stuff constantly. It's kind of like same person, different circumstance. Like it rose. It's not that, you know, he lived in, he had a job that he happened to like better, which made him like a more cheerful and congenial person. It's like the fact that you had a vagina and so they didn't mm. treat you like you were shit and like you were nothing and like you were worthless. And it's just like, I, I love that it's, I, I, I'm enjoying the fact that like Blake as a man is being discriminated against by his family. I think that's like an interesting, um, like an interesting dynamic, I guess, or yeah. And like it, it becomes a lot easier to point out like the sexist bullshit. But it's also, um, I find myself being like, oh, am I more sympathetic to Blake because he's a dude and we're supposed to be more sympathetic to like male figures and like whatever and their experience or whatever. But I think it's great. Overall, great. And I was very <laughs> upset with Rose in this moment. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Another note about law stuff. I was trying to figure out what kind of contract this is and if it's like legit. And I, I, it's, I asked one of my, so I have... I haven't taken wills and estates, which is the class where you learn about wills and estates, which are like 
passing land and other property um, when you die. But it seems like grandma has established a trust. The word custodian was really throwing my friend and I off. And I was confused as to whether Blake was the trustee or the lawyer was the trustee. Um, in a trust, there's one person who's designated to take care of something, be it money or land or whatever, on behalf of beneficiaries, right? So, like, if you're, you know, six and there's a trust fund or whatever, someone else is, like, taking care of that money on your behalf. You are the beneficiary of that trust. And so I was like, is Blake the beneficiary or is he the trustee? What's going on? Can't figure it out. Um, haven't taken the class, but <laughs> yay. I don't think sign up, Malia. So we're going to be I doing might. this podcast. It's, <laughs> it's kind of on the bar, and I didn't want to, but ah, I might. You might have to then. I yeah, that seems kind of important. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you know what? I just had a thought. We should have called our podcast something along the lines of, like, law practice. <sighs> I w- okay. I was thinking that it might be fun to have, like, bonus episodes if we ever do a Patreon or whatever, where I, like, rant about different legal things that aren't in this podcast slash i really just want to talk about tort reform and how much i hate it um. <laughs> all right um if that sounds remotely interesting to anyone um let us know <laughs> if you want to know what really happened to the lady who sued mcdonald's for spilling her hot coffee like hit me up oh that poor lady yep <laughs> yeah she just wanted to pay her medical bills guys anyway talking a little bit more about the stipulations in the contract it seems like Mm -hmm. um attending meetings with the firm maybe are the like meetups with local practitioners or whatever Mm -hmm. i don't know why it was referred to as the firm maybe it's also like meeting with the lawyers i'm also confused as to like how many lawyers there are seems like maybe more than one but okay that's exciting um i want to (laughs) like practitioner law practice that'd be a nightmare i'm so uh it's so good and i thought that the on a reread, the the reference to notes about how often the lawyers can be called on without incurring a debt was really interesting because the first time it didn't strike me as odd at all. I was kind of like, OK, yeah, like often a client will give a lawyer a certain amount of money to spend on their behalf for um, like fees for applications or just like dealing with other things. So it's not like the money that they're paying the lawyer. It's like mm-hmm. money that the lawyer can use. Right. And so I was kind of like, oh, yeah, like grandma maybe left some sort of like money or something that they can like use and like maybe take their own salary or whatever out of or their own fees out of without you know making Blake or Molly or whoever do it and now like after rereading it I'm like oh lol it's because they're practitioners (laughs) because or others (laughs) I haven't figured this out yet um they could be others but it's because of uh karmic debt and I thought that was really funny on a reread (laughs) That's pretty great. Then they talk about opting out, and Blake's like, "This sounds like it's actually kind of easy to do." And Rose is like, "Uh, it's probably actually not easy at all. It's probably a terrible idea." <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Because at first I read that and I was like, "What? Like, that's not a thing." Because Molly would have left immediately, right? Yeah. And I thought that Rose's thought about being weak. And like trying to filter those people out and how there's definitely a trap was really good. But I actually, I prefer Blake's interpretation that Grandma Rose is trying to weed out people who are too stupid to think about the ramifications. Mm -hmm. Um, Both because I think she is disdainful of people that she sees as as unintelligent. And because she's like, you could fuck this up. Like, not only could you just die and it will move on, you could like make this debt worse. And I want to like have this to try to make sure, you know, whatever. I thought that was really interesting. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, you made a lot of notes here about language would be really <laughs> useful, like in terms of knowing like what the actual law thing says. I can understand mm-hmm. why he didn't put like all that in right now, though, because I think your average person um, would not find that very interesting to read. Yeah, if this was pale, I'd be really jazzed for like a extra material with the language of the contract. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's a lot for someone to right up and um i mean hopefully we'll get more because it's fun yeah, for sure so yeah rose ends up getting freshened up into a really old-fashioned old lady's outfit because that's all she can find around the house because it was an old lady's house i i thought that that was like nice comic relief um but it was mm-hmm. also like reflecting on it it's kind of funny because she's so insistent that like 
she's part of the family and she's like Rose D. Thornburn Sr., which was weird because I'm like, it skipped a generation. Are you a junior? What's going on? Anyway, uh, it was just sort of like she and Rose are very similar or she's trying to like inherit Rose and she's in her yeah. clothes. But also it was funny and a cute kind of moment where she was like, don't say anything. It was it was great. I did think it was interesting like rereading this, although I guess I can kind of see maybe it'd be in bad taste and why she wouldn't do it. But it was like the, the mirror that Rose was talking to Blake in front of before, like Molly's bag was right there. <sighs> So she had clothes about that and stuff all. in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I, I, I can understand her maybe not wanting to wear those in terms of, like, she's dead. So. Right. But it also didn't, I mean, she was sad about it, but it's not like she was really broken up about. Oh, that's true. She, and presumably she knew Molly her whole life and stuff, too. That's interesting. I wonder if she didn't yeah. have as good of a relationship with Molly and or Paige. Mm. Um. Slash, that would be a bummer. And it's interesting how Blake being a guy would play into that. Because Molly and Paige had a good relationship, even with, like, the rivalry imposed yeah. upon them by their family. True. Moving on to the next part, if you're okay with that. Mm-hmm. Basically, um, looking through all the legal documents, Blake finds a blueprint that doesn't really match with what he can see of the house. He uses creative measuring essentially <laughs> and um, ends up finding a secret room with a lot of interesting looking books <laughs> yeah this part was really exciting um i loved learning more about blake and like where he comes from and how his past has influenced him it was also like kind of maybe point for me because he's friends with artists and artistic types and i think Ooh. that his comment that he's not uh is kind of self-deprecation like in the first chapter um, he mentions he dated an architect and so he, but he didn't really know anything about the houses. And I was like, you sound like you're just, you know what you're talking about, Blake. It was really neat and refreshing and like tells me a lot about Blake's like practical skills and intelligence. And I never would have thought to do this. I might've gone to look for a measuring tape if I had even noticed that the house seemed wrong. Yeah. It made me wonder how Molly did it. And then I was like, maybe the lawyer just kind of like told her, but maybe not. I don't know. It was, it was neat. Who knows? I know, I was kind of wondering about too, because that's pretty sneaky. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I guess I just have, it does help to have the blueprints of the house for sure. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's pretty awesome. Um, kind of random, right? That she, like, made this whole extra room of sneakiness. Yeah, I was also, like, good for her. Like, I am still pro-Grandma Rose, even if she's an asshole. Like, it's just, like, <laughs> she... And I still don't fully understand how domains work. I've never seen a domain ritual performed as of yet but like she carved out this space in her house even though there were a whole bunch of other domains around it it seems like and she was like nah like i don't know maybe physically she didn't need very much space and the domain kind of expands because magic Mm -hmm. but it was exciting i was like yeah like you carved that space out like you own that like whatever it was funny that the lawyer like i'm assuming the lawyer like put all the books back on the shelf but it seems Mm -hmm. like he also covered the mirror because that's where it seems like rose came into existence in the mirror in the domain because she mentions like the old books that were well taken care of and that's what sparks Blake to like find them also I don't think the lawyer was hanging out in the bathroom <laughs> what? I thought that the way they were saying that though was that there were books like in the main living room because you think that like she would have recognized that it was kind of an odd looking room that she hadn't seen before right because she'd been to Grandma Rose's house yeah um Blake talked about how there were so many books everywhere that it could be some like oh maybe it's somewhere else in the house and she like explicitly says like oh they were like old like those books except better taken care of and there wasn't a mirror in the living room there was just the tv Mm. and yeah I don't think the lawyer was just like hanging out by the bathroom I'm like pretty sure I don't know (laughs) if the lawyer had to like do some sort of practicey thing to get Rose to okay yeah no okay prediction the lawyer had to do something to get Rose to manifest or maybe it was i don't know i hate this okay um, <laughs> <laughs> but so so i'm pretty sure that she came to being in the domain which is like the key that blake needed and that's why it was the mirror was covered in there so that because blake and rose or just blake whatever had to like find the domain and if it was uncovered the mirror rose would be like oh there's this room here like and tell blake how to find it immediately um is why i'm assuming it was covered and the books were put back. 
Because if I was Molly, I would leave that door open because, like, fuck everything. Okay. That's int- so you're you're interpreting this room to be the domain. Yes. I was because I, I, I was interpreting it to have been her room, like her bedroom. Like this was just the room that's been in their family in the house for a really long time. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, but I was thinking since this was like the secret practice room with all the practice stuff, it it probably is the domain, but I was thinking it probably was taken up kind of a long time ago because it was like surrounded by all the practice stuff. So I was thinking wherever the heck her bedroom was that she, you know, either grew up in or whatever, I was thinking that was the domain. Maybe someone can tell me if I'm totally off base. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's what I interpreted it to be. Huh. I guess it would be weird to sleep in someone else's domain because apparently, like, the whole house is taken up or whatever. But I think that I'm still kind of going with my interpretation and right. I might be wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it ever really specifies beyond that. What? It's been a little while since I've read this whole book, though, so I could be wrong. But um, yeah, if anyone wants to just. I guess shed some light and tell me that I'm like way off base and totally wrong. That would be awesome. I mean, not that I really want to hear that I'm wrong, but if I am <laughs> See, wrong, then... can't let Jenny know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. I get to be wrong about a lot of things in my life, so <laughs> it's okay. Okay, cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, anyway, we both interpreted that differently, but so anyway, we go to the room. Uh, he uncovers the mirror so Rose can come down and they look at Grandma Rose's letter, which basically gives some more insight into how screwed they are. She ends up highlighting some important tasks and things that have to be completed, um, at least eventually. So I'm going to read all eight. First thing is read essentials. Second thing, choose a familiar. Third, choose an implement. Four, choose a domain. Number five, find a good man to marry. Mm -hmm. number six is attend monthly council meetings seven said finish three out of four books in the library and eight decrease the family debt so there's a lot to go over so tell me what your thoughts are okay um the first thing was that the letter starts off molly et al which i thought was really harsh because like molly read that and was like oh fuck like I like, might like they're die. Yeah, yeah. But also, I'm wondering when she wrote this because it seems like she decided on Molly at the night. Maybe she just didn't title it or something. I don't know. But yeah, I I know that Ro- Grandma Rose is an asshole, but I still love her. Like I I like that she's like I like she's not apologizing, right? But she also acknowledges that it sucks, and she's just kind of like like she's acknowledging like I know that. I justified a lot of things to myself, but also, like, maybe you'll figure out why and how I justified those things to myself. Yeah. But she's not like, I'm so sorry I put you in this situation. Which, like, maybe would be better. Honestly, sorry. Not mocking apologies. I don't think Grandma would have meant it. But, uh, I don't know. I liked the vibe of this letter. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's definitely interesting to read. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, she talks about how they have a huge amount of debt. Yeah, I don't know what this means. I, I mean, like, I was thinking, I don't know, because they don't, they're not really forsworn, right? Like, maybe someone in the family was forsworn, and then they, like, have been paying it back, but that doesn't make sense, right? I was thinking maybe the, somebody promised something to, like, a deity, or, like, some, like, crazy powerful other, and, or, like, needed something from them, and so it was, like, in exchange, you and your family are fucked forever, or something, and they were, like, so desperate that they just, like, went with it. Okay. Or they were like, eh, like needed a, a big power source for some big practicey thing, and like, like in Nicolette's interlude when she's using like blood and like pouring it into the diagram and stuff. Because uh-huh. like we haven't seen a lot of the Canadiers needing external power sources, but maybe they needed this big power source and somehow was able to like use their karma for it. Eh. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't know where the demons come in. Unless this is Faust. Oh, this is Faust. Okay. It wasn't specifically a deity. They like made a pact with a demon or some like group of demons or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) All right. 
I like it. So then they talk about beings as long lived as powerful others have trouble telling us apart. So basically, like if they call you Rose or I'm trying to remember some of the other names, if they call you a random name. Esther, Ruth, Elizabeth. I don't remember what the other one was. Mm, yes. They're basically, she's Very basically biblical. Like, just go with it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I thought that was sort of funny, and um, it made me think like, oh, the lawyer didn't know what Molly's last name was. Like, maybe they're all the same person to the lawyer because the lawyer's an other. Like, maybe I was wrong, and like, I still think I'm leaning toward practitioner. Okay, but I don't have a basis for either. He's he's something. He's something. <laughs> I'd be really impressed sure. if like uh, an other. I mean, I guess there are like a lot of others that are like much more human passing. But it'd be really neat to meet an other who, like, got a law degree and passed the bar or whatever it is in Canada. Like, that's just fun. What if what if a lawyer is just, like, really confident and aware? Huh? Think about that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she looks very skeptical. Like that's He knows too much it. slash... Why is the, it aware? The, the debt. The, mm, the like, yes. the, you'll, the lawyers will exact a price or whatever. Like, it's too... It's too knowing. Okay. I have to figure Slash out maybe the, the karmic debt was that they oh, like made a whole bunch of people aware and then now they're fucked. <laughs> that would suck. So like, what do you think the reasons are to get a karmic debt? I mean, obviously we have the horse barn, right? And like what I'm not going to go I... into it because I don't want to like I just want right. to hear what your thoughts are. Right. So, I mean, there's like Forsworn or something. And then I'm thinking like making a deal and your side of the deal is like taking a huge karmic debt. Or, I mean, then it's like breaking so, like, the deal. How do you have, how did the spirits determine like good and bad karma, right? Um, By you not doing the thing that you were supposed to do or said okay. you'd do. Well, I was thinking maybe they could like make a deal with like a karmic law, other or practitioner and that person could like either fuck them over or like somehow extract karma and use it. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is really hard. That's okay. I'm just, I'm just hearing what your thoughts are. I mean, like as we read on more, like you'll get a bit bigger picture of certain things. So, mm -hmm. but I'm just like, do you think certain like inherent things, like depending on, what you decide to do with your practice maybe could cause you to have a more positive or negative debt. So I feel like there's something about the aware. I, I don't okay. remember it. Well, like if you, if you make someone aware, you're like responsible for them. Uh huh. Or like, if you like tell them too much about the practice or whatever, you're like responsible for their something. And I feel like if bad yeah. things happen to them, then like, it's gonna reflect Karma badly on you. Doesn't like Karma you. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's so, like that and being forsworn are like the two things I can really think of. That you know of. Yeah. Okay. So just saying that like there are some things in practice that like, like that lying. you can choose to do that might give you bad karma or good karma, right? Yeah. <laughs> like okay. lying? I mean lying it seems like the big one. Those are, I mean, I'm just putting food for thought out there. Just things Aww. to kind of ponder about. That's all. Okay, but we can move on. That's fine. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, do, 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 do. so she's like, you guys have to read essentials and awaken yourselves. And they're all like, fuck. <laughs> and I, I thought that ahead. was, or I, after having seen the awakening in Pale, I'm really curious as to how this is going to go because that was very like, other involved um and they were like the, they were making a deal with these others to awaken and i'm really curious as to how it works when that's not happening because uh -huh. in like the about section to pale it's like families do this like kind of symbolic version of this or maybe matthew says i don't know Th but they do this kind of symbolic -y version of this to awaken because they're not like actually making a deal with a bunch of others which is why everyone else needs like external power sources unlike mm -hmm. the kenneteers and so that was really, I'm really excited about that. And I yeah. don't know what to expect. I also okay. imagine like Blake and Rose are both going to awaken and mm -hmm. that'll be a really interesting setup and an interesting diagram, right? Because the, with the Kenneteers are like, Ooh, three, three is a good number. And like yeah. two might not be as good of a number, but I assume they're going to be 
bound together through awakening and that's gonna be interesting okay yeah for sure i agree okay and so then after the awakening they talk she talks about like yeah having to do implement um familiar domain and kind of goes into all that stuff Mm -hmm. yeah i realized like assuming that they're both awakening they both probably have to do all of those or it's like imbalanced and that's going to be really interesting and sort of plays into my big theory at the end of this podcast. Okay. But I also had a like funny thought because I I'm not sure what Rose is and if Rose is an other. Um, if Rose becomes Blake fam- familiar, that'd be really funny. Um, <laughs> That's true. But also ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering also if they will be particularly strong because there are two of them, or if they'll their power will be like split between them, or like how that will work because it seems like two people who have all these rituals done are going to be much stronger than just one, but they also yeah. are the same person. I don't know. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. I mean, they, they do have five years to do, to do these. So it's not like they have to do it right away, but mm-hmm. um, I mean, that's still not a ton of time to like pick like a life partner essentially and a life implement and a life place, you know, <laughs> um, right. with everything else, but it's right. A, it's a little bit of time at least. Um, yeah, well, the repetition of five years over and over is really, or like 25 or whatever. To me, like, number one, five years and 25 are not the same thing because I don't mm-hmm. know how old Blake is, but I don't think he'd turn 20 today. I also thought him mentioning his specific birthday as January 8th was weird. I'm like, is this important? Um, does this play into the 25 thing? But also, I now I'm thinking that this book might span five years, and I didn't think it would. I hmm. thought it was only going to be like six months or something like I just thought it would like a whole bunch of stuff would happen really fast but now I'm thinking maybe Mm -hmm. there's going to be like time jumps or time skips Hmm. or periods of time where they're just like learning and studying and practicing Uh okay and I think that that's it's just like a very different time scale than what I anticipated I guess um what makes you come to that conclusion just this letter kind of going over that or like Um, what makes you think that I think just the amount of times that it's mentioned that like 25 is a big year slash I I'm figuring out to the end of the fifth year and then y'all have to, or you have to take over them specifically pointing out the birthday at the beginning. They, it just like, that's been repeated so many times Mm, Okay, that it seems like that's the time scale unless they both just die in like three months or something. Which would be such a bummer. Please don't die. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, anyway, uh, back, we're going to, she wants him to find a good man to marry and specifically not decent and kind, but someone who can give you strength and who's going to be a good ally. She said many of our best partnerships in our family came about when our family married bastards rather than gentlemen. And then yeah, like, I, yeah. Oh, well, I was thinking like, oh, uh, was, Rose's husband a gentleman like he's dead no one has mentioned him maybe he sucked in her opinion Um, I'm also wondering if they are practitioners slash know about the practice or if like the practitioners the wives or whatever keep that like completely hidden from their partners I mean just just looking at grandma Rose do you think she would pick like a real loving gentleman no but I think maybe she she could have fucked up when she was young i also think that she might like a pushover um i guess i mean he could have just been old and died right yeah it's like who knows but literally no one has been like grandma and grandpa's house like true maybe she was a single mom that's interesting i don't know i don't know we'll see yeah so blake confirms he is not gay so (laughs) that is a little difficult uh strike two for me (laughs) It's a nice rabbit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wonder uh, how um, literal this will be. Slash. Well, I guess how does yeah, Rose get married? Lawyers, right? So yeah, it might be hard for her to get married within a mirror, but I guess you know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see. And then last, yeah, finish three out of four books in the library. Um, saying you're going to need some assistance with foreign languages. And then see to the, the bloodline to the end of the fifth year with less of a debt than we had at the start of your custodianship. 
Yeah, the only thought I had about this, or like the main thought was like, how will they know how much debt they have? Um, I was imagining like one of those posters that's like the thermometer that's like colored in with red as to like how much money you've raised for whatever cause like i thought it'd be funny if like somewhere in there is some like indicator showing like the level of debt um and if not like maybe like so avery and pale just kind of made her indicator bracelet to track how she's doing when she's in the paths or whatever and maybe they can like make something like that to track like how fucked their family is that would not be a bad idea uh, kind of mentions stay out of the north end of Jacob's Bell and a couple other things, you know. Oh, well, the the north end. <laughs> yes. I had a fun. My thought was like, Johannes? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bring Johannes back every episode. He, I was like, he seemed. There's so much hate for this guy. Man. He seemed the most competent out of. Mm all of the people we were seeing and the most like knowledgeable and tricksy or whatever. And I bet that he lives at the North end of Jacobsville. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a sweet, like fluffy dog familiar, you know, like, yeah, I mean, just, just Does, is this familiar? Like a dog, like a dog of war dog. Huh? Anyway, <laughs> not telling you anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. So yeah, so basically it's also like, don't make any major deals or bargains. Um, like you have to run everything past the lawyer, including um, the three major rituals. Also have the dramatis personae. If I said that correctly. Um, it's a little black yeah. book which has the lawyers as the ally and everybody else as enemies. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny and like bummer. <laughs> Just immediately like, like well, bummer. Yeah, like that freaking sucks, dude. I I wonder if that's like influenced by the huge karmic debt that they have or if grandma rose just like severely fucked up um one of the main or one of the like recurring themes of pale is about connections and like making allies and like having people who trust you and it seems like if grandma rose like had been a better person maybe this wouldn't be so hard on blake but also maybe the things were totally stacked against her like how everyone like thinks charles is super fucking creepy um yeah. partially probably because of him being forsworn mm -hmm. maybe like Rose didn't have a chance, and she was just kind of like, okay, we're just going to roll with it. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff she's focusing on, or she focused on in terms of practice, probably didn't help in terms of being a great person, but you know. I don't want to judge these demons before I meet them. <laughs> Did you just say you don't want to judge the demons? <laughs> yeah, they might be fine. I don't know. It's Wild Bo. He makes everything sympathetic. <laughs> Except, like, Verona's okay. dead. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be real sympathetic. I'm going to look forward to... Yeah, they're going to be great. They're going to be like kitty, like fluff demons. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. Hmm. I guess the demons are why Pale is like scary. Um, I'm not scared yet. <laughs> All right. Famous last sounded like okay. a challenge. <laughs> My goodness. No, be wild, careful, no wild, but please don't hurt me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Oh, man. All right, so, yeah, so it's nice they can kind of read a couple books, like, they kind of count as one person, maybe, so, I like they were saying mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So basically, they're talking about all that, and then turn around, find some even more disturbing books that Grandma Rose wrote, and this is kind of where we've been hinting at the whole time, so I'm just going to read the titles out. The Worst of Others, or The Worst of the Others, Devils and Details, Dark Contracts, Classifying Others, Fiends and Darker Beans, Hellfire, Findings, <laughs> Infernal Wrath, Packs and Prices. Yeah, that sounds really nice, Malia. <laughs> so, that like, they should really nice. They should read Packed and Prices first. That sounds the most useful for their situation. But mm -hmm. also, okay, so upon further reflecting, the practice is all about, like, constructs that have arisen out of how humans think about things and conceive things and conceptualize things. So yeah, these demons are going to be bad and scary and I'm less excited now. <laughs> um, Cause yeah, they're probably going to be mean. I was thinking about them reading all of these books. Cause like Rose is like freaking out. Didn't really click with me. I was kind of like, oh, okay, cool. And I was thinking about them having to read these and like, does Blake have to like hold a book up in front of a mirror and like flip the page while he's reading? Cause that sucks. <laughs> So, if you remember, like, um, when when she first came into the mirror world, 
there oh, was she can some touch books. all the books yeah she can touch she can touch the books and she couldn't touch the contract because she couldn't see it mm-hmm. cool okay exactly so she can as long as her mirrors facing the, the thing in the mirror then she can pick them up well so i don't know what to do with the fact that grandma wrote these I've kind of been operating under the assumption. I mean, like, obviously, so obviously, more Grandma Rose praise. She's like very capable and very competent, and like knows her shit. And like, I've, I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of respect for her. I'm wondering, like, who bound these? Did she bind them? Is there some sort of like practitioner publishing press? That's cool. But I was kind of operating under the assumption that the whole family had had the same practice for a long time, um, mm-hmm. and maybe Grandma Rose has made some like strides into the field or consolidated things in a more useful way or something but i was surprised that she wrote so many of these slash maybe it's the rose d thornburn senior 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 all the way back who've been writing these um <laughs> doubt it but i was i was sort of assuming that they all were like in the same line of practice and this leads me to think like maybe grandma rose was like fuck it let's go hang out with the demons uh to make this better for ourselves Okay, so, I mean, I'm kind of getting close to hinting at something here um, <laughs> by saying this, um, but I'm kind of like, you know, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> so you don't think that having, I mean, again, you're, you're still not totally set on the, like, or you still are kind of, like, haven't changed your mind about the type of practice that Grandma Rose was, right? You're just like, she could have dabbled in demons, essentially. I mean, I think it's like, it seems like she really focused on demons. My thing is, I don't know. I still don't know what karmic law practice is. I don't think it necessarily has to do with demons. It definitely not exclusively, but I don't see why she couldn't like deal with karmic law and also like try to make Faustian pacts to reduce her family's debt or like try to undo the Faustian pact that her family I feel like you really want this to be about karmic law. I really do. Oh, update on everyone from last week. Karmic law is not mentioned in the Implementum textbook, so I don't have to write fan fiction (laughs) on it. Like I promise. All right. (laughs) Um, I was bummed that it wasn't, but it's okay. Well, just hypothetically, you know, like (laughs) whether she's dabbling in demons or whether, you know, whether this is really the first time the family is getting into it or whether it's been for a long time, you don't think that would have any impact on karma at all? Just dabbling with demons? I mean, a lot of people do really bad shit. I don't know. Like I, I understand that demons are like particularly bad or scary. It seems like I feel doubtful about grandma Rose fucking her family over more. Maybe she didn't realize what was going to happen. If, demons screw up your karma rating your 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 karma credit but okay i i'm not like i'm just trying i'm not gonna be surprised if the working with demons is bad and fucks over your karma but i'm kind of thinking about like maybe not necessarily the mussers but there's and they like steal people's implements which is shitty but i feel like the spirits would be into that because drama Mm-hmm. I feel like there should be enough spirits who like Halloween and like edgelord stuff to like approve of Grandma Rose's bullshit and demon mm, interaction. I'm also like, there's the people who like uh, deal with the others that are completely about like drug addiction and stuff. And they like channel that, okay. which yeah. also seems really shitty. Okay. Um. So I guess I'm just like trying to think of what I, when, that's all fair enough. It's like, I, I get what you're saying and everything. I'm just trying to figure out like, cause obviously like this practice, whatever practice has been going on in her family, it's been going on for a long time. Right. Mm-hmm. Not everyone can be forced born in her family. Right. So mm-hmm. what could be so bad for karma that's not being forced born that's worse than, than you're saying demons. Um, that's worse than like, you know, I'm just thinking like, what could be, have been so bad to raise this karmic debt that much? Cause it seems like it's a lot <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I'm still kind of thinking, I mean, but on the other hand, like it's not the level of force worn, at least for grandma as an individual. Um, because like she still has her home and like, she has like money and she, yeah. Like it's it's she's not living like Charles. 
um, yeah. or like Seth would be or whatever. She has, She's not she like still had the practice, broken. right? And it seems like, I mean, I don't know, maybe her, everyone else in her family was force born, but it seems like they probably still no, had I, practice, yeah. right? And does yeah. force born, does that karma, like, does that move on to your other family members? If, I don't like, if you look think at so. Seth, yeah, like, I don't think so. So how would there be a karmic family debt, right? I mean, like, I kind of was talking about this earlier. Like, maybe you can somehow, uh, like, maybe they made, like, a gamble and a bet with someone and they fucked up and something, something. Because, okay. like, I again, I don't know how karmic law works. Or, like, they could have used it or s- made a deal in exchange for a power source. Karmic law might not come into this book at all and I'm going to be real bummed. Um, <laughs> but, and, like, yeah, it totally could be, like, they're devil worshippers and the spirits don't like that. I just, it's like, I don't understand why the demons are so scary yet, which is dumb as a Catholic to say out loud. Um, <laughs> but this is not real life, so they're probably... That's true. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll keep on going through the book and, you know, we'll see some things. I think we're at the point where we can talk about bold and specific predictions, right? Yes. Okay. So my bold and specific prediction is that Rose is going to get out of the mirror world. Um mm-hmm. There's okay. a lot of tension in these chapters that's really interesting in terms of Rose being stuck and being trapped and Blake trying to accommodate her, but also, you know, he needs to go check the house out and like this mirror is heavy and he can't carry it everywhere. And what if he drops it? There is this tension. And you know should have gotten. Mm-hmm. Sorry, this is kind of random. Like, I'm pretty sure he never got this, but he should have gotten some really like mirrored sunglasses. Oh my gosh, that's so good. It's so good. I don't think, I'm pretty sure he didn't do that, but man, he should have. Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) That'd be weird if people can see Rose, which I don't know that they can. Probably practitioners can. It'd be weird to like. That's true. You just say they're like joke sunglasses. Yeah. Those ones that look like lizard eyes or whatever, you know. Do the the mirrors have to be facing Blake for Rose to show up? I think they have to be in the same area as him. Okay. Um, Cause she, she's she's standing wherever. I mean, like doesn't see himself reasonable. in the mirror, ever. No, that's so weird. Okay. Um, At least I don't think so. Yeah. Right. So I. So, but yeah, and either like she has to get out, right? Because like the awakening ritual, different things. That's a very imbalanced diagram. I think if one person is like completely dependent and trapped on the other person's like physical location, and like maybe she gets out by becoming as familiar. Maybe they like trade places somehow and like they switch who gets to be in the real world and who doesn't. Mm-hmm. And that's why Rose gets to marry a man and like, Blake doesn't. And like, that would suck a lot. And I hope that's not what happens. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Blake's going to have to have some sort of like police cam strapped to his chest, except it's a mirror. <laughs> so that he okay. can, people, everyone can. Yeah. No, I like it. All right. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Just like for, gonna do our pale in comparison part of the podcast where we compare packed and pale a little bit here so how do you think this introduction to the practice compares with pale's protagonist <laughs> um do, would you say that the others did a better job of kind of explaining or easing them in i mean we didn't really get to see all of them i guess explaining everything really we pretty much just mm-hmm. saw the awakening ritual there but i guess from what we can infer what would you to say about that yeah i think that this is a lot more thorough and like kind of a lot more straightforward in terms of just like here's a bunch of information here's a bunch of resources like this is what i want you to do Mm -hmm. i think i don't know which method i would have preferred because like it's it's hard because in this scenario blake and rose don't have a choice they don't like get a whole bunch of information up front and then get to walk away and I think, and like, part of that is like making people aware and blah, blah, blah. But it's really like, as someone who's read Pale, it's really nice having all this information right off the front and like, or right off the bat, like, I know what it all it means. I'm like, oh, cool, the rituals. Oh, cool, blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it um, a lot more than other people would. It might be like way too overwhelming and way too, like, like just too much information mm-hmm. to be able to digest. But having it all there written down is like nice. On the other hand, I think that, like, it seems like Mist did a fairly good job of explaining a lot of the things they could and couldn't do Mm -hmm. before they made the decision to awaken. I don't think that they got, sorry, I mean, like, I don't think they got 
enough information necessarily. Mm -hmm. So in a way they were, they weren't fully understanding what they were agreeing to. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's not as great. And also like they didn't have the books. They didn't have, they didn't know how to draw diagrams. Like they had to learn Mm -hmm. all of this stuff from other Mm -hmm. people who weren't necessarily trustworthy or wanting them to understand all of these things. Whereas like grandma Rose is like, I need you to fucking understand. (laughs) Yeah. Which is refreshing. And if you can remember too, like, um, the way they found out about like implements and, um, familiars and domains and all that, like, I don't think Miss quite wanted them to know at that point. Mm-hmm. She didn't tell it. It kind of was like a, it slipped out. I, I don't remember exactly what the context was, but I remember this was like, ah, didn't really want to talk to you guys about that quite yet. So, yeah, yeah it seems like they definitely didn't get all the information. Right. The Kenneteers definitely had to, like, fight for information and resources, mm-hmm. whereas Blake and Rose, it's just like, please, God, figure this out immediately. Here you go. Mm-hmm. Um, very different okay. situations, but um, yeah, once a person who wants people to become very, very good at the practice very quickly. And the other is a group of people that like really don't want that to happen. True. Um, Which is interesting. interesting. What do you think about like, I mean, do you think, do you have any idea of like the power levels in terms of like what the differences are going to be or do you not really have any idea yet or just like. I'm assuming that the Kenneteers are like immensely stronger because of mm-hmm. the deal they made with the others and the power source they draw on. I mean, maybe grandma has some like amazing power source and it would be kind of lame if like it's very slow, meticulous process. Unless again, I guess there are those time skips because it, it was a lot, it's a lot more interesting to read, you know, Verona drawing a really cool diagram and it just like working and not like sucking all of herself out. Um, mm-hmm. But Rose doesn't seem to have any source of power other than herself according to like my previous theory about her breaking the ice. And so I, I don't think, and like karma, I don't know, but then like demons, I don't know. They're not going to be as strong. The demons might not be that bad. Right. So <laughs> I'm still, you know, they might just be like little mini demons, just like buddies with goblins, just hanging out, having fun with stuff. Just hellfire. It's more like a hell, like spark. Right. It's just, it's just a little, <laughs> just a little tickle of evil you know here and there yeah as, as someone who's <laughs> like been playing hades i mean i guess like the the demons are all kind of bad um so maybe as someone who's read the bartimaeus trilogy um not all gin hashtag not all gin have you read that i have not read that it no idea what you're talking about but was a long time okay that's fair that's fine <laughs> i mean i don't know they might they might be cat demons well, that doesn't really make oh, sense because, like, cats are kind of, like, uh, disliked by, it. like, others. Um, oh, but, yeah. I forgot. Right? Yeah. So that doesn't really make sense. But anyway, or, kind of random thought also. Kind of jumping around here. Sorry, guys. What did you think about, um, so this is the familiar part. She, the last line is, like, do not allow your familiar to take the form of a rat or dog. Yeah. So her familiar was a cat. Oh, this reminds me of like those like those mind puzzles where it's like you have like a mouse and a cat and a dog and you have to get them all across the bridge, but you can only take one at a time or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. And they can't eat each other or you lose. Yeah. I feel like rats and hell have like similar vibes. So I'm not sure why a rat would be a bad thing. I feel like dogs are like hashtag loyal, hashtag pure. And so maybe grandma would be like, or like the demons or whatever would be like, nah, the dog. It's mm. too pure. Slash Johannes no, already say. has a dog. Johannes That's has right. already Johannes cornered that dog. part of the market. Okay. Just just thought I'd throw that out there, which is what you think. <laughs> Maybe uh, it has something to do with like the Chinese zodiac or whatever. Because mm. rat and dog are both years in that, and maybe like True. Their, their family is not compatible. <laughs> that would be a twist. Be like <sighs> It's probably not that. <laughs> That's true. Guys, check your Chinese horoscopes. That's right. I'm the ear of the snake. You're the monkey, monkey. right? Yep. That's right. (laughs) All right. Now we're going to go over our discussion question. For this week, our discussion question was, rate Blake's survival skills. How do you think Rose would have fared in his place? We've got some really good answers, I think. I'm pretty happy with them. Our first person, deep scorn underscore prisoner. So he actually says, in his opinion, or her, her opinion, I was... Or their opinion. This, their opinion. Someone's opinion. 
the deep score prisoner's opinion. <laughs> Saying Blake has pretty mediocre survival skills. Good thing is he just acts. That's pretty much the greatest advantage there. Saying Rose, by contrast, is more likely to freeze and try to think of a solution, which is great if she has time to think, but fight or flight moment might not be the best time. So this great line he said, or they said here, both would probably die pretty quickly if they had to survive a hatchet style situation. Yeah. So Macy one has a really amazing comment that all of you really should go look at. Um, yes. This because... is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but they won. They won. This is question question. Um, they, they talk about, Blake and Rose in comparison to Bear Grylls. They talk about the five rules um, of Bear Grylls, which are to use steel-toed boots, use the buddy system, don't limit supplies to their intended use, make sure food isn't rotten, and get shelter that adequately protects from the elements. And they go through and score Blake and Rose on how they did in this chapter. Um, Blake rates a uh, four point. Five out of 10 and Rose rates a six out of 10, but Maisie one concludes that they both would probably uh, die or like they just, they don't have very good <laughs> survival skills. They're like, and they're pretty mediocre. Yeah. Shouldn't. Rose um, does have an edge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really great but, though. You should read the whole thing. Yes. I'm trying to, I didn't write it down the actual like five point comparison. He said he gave the, or they gave the credit to somebody else, like actually making mm that five points not bear grills but i didn't write it down so go look at their comments it's really good i was really happy with them <laughs> we also have code zeta who says basically kind of irritated with rose <laughs> the vibe i got <laughs> which fair enough um says rose is too insistent and undecided at the same time um seems like she actually has to be in control to contribute Except she won't shut the hell up and let the people doing the acting and thinking to do their jobs. <laughs> Which, that's that's fair. I can, I can see that. Saying that if positions were swapped or Blake was in the mirror and Rose was in person getting attacked, um, they would trust Blake to be able to give directions. Although, they do say that pretty sure both of them would have died um, without the other one there. Right, so then uh, lastly, ghostly underscore bird rounds out our answers saying that he think or <laughs> saying that they think that Blake was kind of mediocre and got lucky um, seems to be the consensus <laughs> in this discussion question yeah. talks about how yeah talks about how growing up in Canada has taught ghostly underscore bird that freezing to death at night is very real uh, that you shouldn't go running off into the woods That's, and yeah. that um, if Blake had gotten turned around and like couldn't find the road again he probably would have died and as a nice helpful tip for those of you who aren't involved in some of the dis discord or other places um jenny and i learned a useful thing <laughs> from all of our yes, wonderful canadian um, listeners so it's actually not toke even though i feel like looking at that i still read it as toke um it looks like it's actually pronounced toke so sorry <laughs> everyone <laughs> that is not a uh, common term here in the u.s at the very least <laughs> i mean maybe it is up north i don't know but at least in hawaii and texas and wherever else we've been lived like, never yeah. heard of it <laughs> yeah i never heard of that but useful before, and so. cute and endearing term so yes i mean or very manly i don't or like tough i don't know no. uh, maybe toque is supposed to be really like hardcore i mean we don't know okay well I just have to say, too, I don't know if it's Reddit or something, but yeah, it's like every time I, it's like, as a woman, you'd think that I'd know better not to assume every person's a dude, but just like reading everybody's usernames, I just want to say he, which is really stupid, but. Yeah, it's good practice know. in gender neutral pronouns. Yay. Yay. All right. <laughs> anyway. All right. So we'll go on to our discussion question for the week. Um. So, out of all the books in Grandma Rose's library, which one would catch your eye and why? Do you have any thoughts on that, Malia? Um, any of the demon books or some of the other ones you think? I'm like, what we've got. Lilith's Children is a really hardcore title. Um, that is. I want to know what Poppets means. I was thinking that, too, just because it's like 
Poppets? Like, I don't know. Puppets. It's like British puppets. <laughs> There's also like Cassandra's gaze sounds really exciting just because like knowing the future, but also you're um, going to no one will ever believe you. I think I think the one that was the most exciting was Pax and Prices just because of it would help me figure out this story a lot more. That's fair. But for like, yeah, for like my life, honestly, probably glamour. Glamour is really fun and pale. Glamour is fun. That's true. Yeah. Or dry. Dry. Anyway. Yeah. What yeah. about you? Ugh, dude. I don't know. It'd be kind of maddening things. Although I'd be kind of scared that mm. that's going to make me go mad by rating it. Mm-hmm. Um, and blessed wrongs. What the hell does that even what the mean? Fuck does that mean? <laughs> yeah. What the hell does that mean? Probably one of those. Although like in terms of catching my eye. Yeah. Like probably one of the really shitty looking ones like you know hellfire or infernal wrath like i wouldn't want to read it but that would catch my eye and be make me be like i want to get out of here immediately mm. Mm. yeah <laughs> um, i want to read dark contracts because the law student in me thinks that'd be fun mm, probably would be interesting that's for sure all right well that's the end of our podcast <laughs> this week uh, thanks for listening if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast please subscribe share it with your friends and leave a rating and review if you'd like to support wild Bo as he continues to write fantastic stories go to patreon.com slash wild you can follow the pod on twitter at pale comparison or send us an email at pale in comparison pod at gmail.com Keep an eye out for our Pale in Comparison Reddit thread where you can answer our discussion question and share your thoughts about this episode. Or give critique. Although, uh, can you please make it nice? Or tell me that it's okay that I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Malia. Thanks. All right, I've got my random fact of the week. Armadillo shells are bulletproof. Have a good one, guys. Bye. <laughs>